Hey, welcome to another episode of Spirit Anointed Leadership. I'm so blessed to have you join me today. Now, I gotta tell you, today is gonna be a little different than our typical podcast and VCAS are. We always want to equip, empower, and encourage you as we go after our mission together. And for the last year, as we've been releasing these episodes, our heart really has been, how can we serve a pastor and a leader who's serving anywhere in a local church? And we've been really blessed that there are people now all over the country that are taking in Spirit and Order Leadership. We really hope that it's a blessing for you. We hope that you get some great tools in your toolbox that you can actually apply to your situation. We really pray that this stuff is incredibly practical and applicable for you. But here's the thing. Today is going to be a bit unique for this reason. We're going to talk today about an event that's coming up for the pastors and leaders of the Great Lakes region. Now, let me tell you something, and that is, is that if you've made this a part of your weekly kind of hangout, something that you do on Mondays or whatever it is that it fits into your schedule, keep coming back. I'm so excited about the content, some of which we've already recorded, some of which we're about to record. The content that we're about to share with you is off the charts. The interviews we've been able to do are so incredibly awesome. And I want you to take them in, not because of me, but because of what our guests have said. And so I really want you to be able to glean from that some things that I think will be really helpful for you in the settings that you're in. But today, today we're going to talk about some things specifically for the Great Lakes region. Now, this episode is going to be dropped on June 5th. And that is just a few days before our regional conference coming up on Saturday, June 10th. And we really want to try and set the stage, if you will, for what we are praying that Holy Spirit is going to do with us and in us and hopefully through us at regional conference. If you're planning on being with us at regional conference, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. Now, I get it. As pastors, we're supposed to be there. That is one of our responsibilities. And as a lay person, I know that you're an invited delegate, and I really hope that you'll understand how grateful we are for you, for your presence there. We're really looking forward to a great regional conference. As a matter of fact, I literally just got out of yet another meeting. We've been planning regional conference for months. Our deep desire is to make sure that it is incredibly meaningful for you. Yeah, we've got business to take care of. We've got some voting to do, and that really is important in the life of the church, no doubt. But we're praying, as we always pray, that Holy Spirit will show up in a very real, meaningful, and special way for you. We don't want it to just be another business meeting. Again, there are important business things to do, but we want it to be something that's meaningful for you, that when you walk away, that you will honestly be able to say, I sense the Holy Spirit met with me personally, one-on-one. That really is what we want your experience on Saturday to be. So, And our attempt to make that a reality, let me just give you a couple of things that I think will help set our spirits and our hearts towards that. First of all, on a logistic level, by now you know that we're doing regional conference in four different areas. And the reason we're doing that is because we wanna make it as convenient for you as possible. Each site will have its own site host and its own live worship team. So as a result of that, each site is going to feel very legitimate. You're going to feel like you're having your own experience right there. And then there'll be times that are very collective in nature, where we're all going to be together. And we'll be able to talk back and forth to each other. So hopefully that convenience factor will make it possible for more people to be able to come and for you to be able to recruit more delegates, even in these last few days, to join us. We really would love to have you come and be part of Regional Conference. Now, let's talk a little bit about the actual programming, what we're praying that God will do in us and through us. One of the things that I have felt led by Holy Spirit to really key in on is how can we, as a GLR staff, serve you? That really is our heart. Our heart is to put a towel over our arm and say, how can we serve the awesome leaders, the awesome pastors of the Great Lakes region? I see, What I recognize is is that you sacrifice all the time. There's no such thing as doing ministry and not having it be sacrificial in nature. So we want to come alongside of you and say, how can we support you as you sacrifice for the sake of the kingdom and for the sake of its advancement? So I want you to come into regional conference with a couple of things in mind. Number one, 
Think about how we can be praying for you specifically. There's going to be a time during my vision talk when I'm going to ask you to write down a specific prayer request for you so that I can be praying and the GLR staff can be praying for you. Now, we're not going to share these widely. They're not going to be out publicly somewhere. It's just going to be for me and for the GLR staff to pray for you. So be thinking between now and Saturday, hmm, what would I like Chris and the GLR staff to be praying for me about? We consider a delight to be able to pray for you. It really is an honor. And I go through the names of our pastors of the, of the GLR a lot as I pray for you, but I'd love to know how I can be praying for you specifically. So please let us know that. Also, come, come to district conference, come to regional conference with a, with an idea of how we can be praying for your church as you go after the mission that God has given us. Maybe you have in mind a, a special event that's coming up. Maybe it's a baptism service that your church does during the summer. Maybe it's something that you're already planning for in the fall. Maybe it's a series that you're already planning on doing, whatever it might be. Maybe it's the idea of, you know what, we have two or three people that we sense are right on the cusp of opening up their hearts to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we would just love it, Chris and GLR staff, if you would join us in praying that they would actually open up their hearts to a relationship with Jesus. It can be a variety of things. Maybe you need to raise some funds for something that you want to do as a church. Really, we're open to whatever the Holy Spirit places on your heart to share with us. We just want you to know that you're being interceded along with a group of people that love you, that are pulling for you, that love to pray for you. It really is an honor and a privilege to be able to do that. So, come ready to share. And finally, and when I say finally, trust me, I got a couple more minutes of stuff here. I, I want you to consider the fact that I know very well that some of you are walking into regional conference and you can't wait to see people and brag on God for all that he's been doing in your midst. Like you've had a great year or maybe you've had a fantastic spring and God's been doing some awesome things in your heart and in your ministry. And there's some fruit that's coming out of that. And you, you, it's not all about being braggadocious. You just want to share what God is doing. So I just want to encourage you, man, if that's you, come and, and get ready to share with your colleagues what Holy Spirit has been doing in your midst. Don't shy back from that. Let's give God glory for that. Others of you, however, and I've been on this side of the equation plenty of times, when you, you come into a regional conference as a pastor and you're kind of a little bit bummed. You're, you're just a little bummed at the things that have been going on or not going on in the life of your church. And quite frankly, if it was totally up to you, you would slip in just before regional conference started and slip out just before it's all over. Because the idea of connecting with your peers, well, it's not something you're really looking forward to. Well, can I be honest with you as well? Come and allow the Holy Spirit to remind you of his love for you, of his calling on your life. And could you be brave enough and bold enough to ask a colleague to actually pray for you? Say, hey, if I'm really honest, you and I, fellow pastors, we've been friends for a while. What I really need today is just someone to pray for me right here and right now. As, as I go back to my church world things, man, maybe it's, maybe you're frustrated with a, a relationship with a board member. Maybe you're just frustrated because the numbers, the, the pre-COVID numbers haven't come back yet. Maybe you're frustrated over the finances of the life of your church. What I want to encourage you to do is please be real. You don't have to worry about being, you know, the old phrase, Debbie Downer. No, come and be real and let people breathe faith back into your spirit. Let them breathe faith back into your heart of what God can do. Let's be real with each other. Let's talk about how it really is now. And let's also have an expectant heart that God's still working, that God's still moving, and he wants to move in your setting, in your context. So come ready to be real, celebrating the things that God has done and being ready to be open to the work that he wants to do in your heart and in your life. I can remember several times walking into meetings like regional conference or a different kind of conference 
with kind of my arms up, if you will, and just saying, you know, I'm here, but I just don't know if I'm ready to take anything in or not. I signed up for this conference or I have to show up at regional conference, but I don't know. I'm just I'm a bit discouraged. And yet Holy Spirit showed up and he really ministered to me. And that's what I'm praying for you. He said this coming Saturday, as part of Regional Conference 2023, that you will be ministered to by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, by your Heavenly Father. And he might do that through a fellow pastor, a colleague, a friend, a fellow layperson who will just pray for you because you're willing to just be vulnerable enough, just to be real enough to say, hey, would you pray for me? Okay. Last thing, you know, the Bible encourages us. I happen to be right now this week, I'm, I'm reading through uh, first, second, and third John. And as you know, the apostle John during that point is just begging us to love the people around us. He's making it so crystal clear. You know, this is, this is a commandment that we've been given from the beginning, just to love each other. And as I thought about that, as I thought about you, and as I thought about regional conference, I thought this is an awesome opportunity for us to really care for each other, to love each other, and to go all out in love for each other. So let me give you an idea of what that might look like. In order to do that, I want to tell you a quick story. I'm blessed to have two beautiful daughters. I just love my girls so much. And one of them has some specific cognitive challenges. And, um, and as a result of that, the worst question you can ever ask my daughter is, uh, what grade are you are, what grade are you in in school? And what's your favorite subject? Those are her two worst questions to answer. And yet, when someone meets someone who's in school, who's school age, what's our most natural questions that we ask? What grade are you in? And what's your favorite subject in school? It's just, it, they just come out of our mouth so naturally and so easily. And as a result of that, uh, my daughter has found so many interactions with people to be a challenge because um, she just doesn't like to answer those questions. A few years ago, um, the Great Lakes region was putting on an event where a guy by the name of Bob Goff was speaking. And um, my, my wife, Mary, had read my daughters a couple of Bob's books. And so they were actually pretty excited to meet Bob. It was kind of a thing that they were really looking forward to. And so... It was just before Bob was going to speak at 41 hours and Bob was back in the green room. He and I had already connected a couple times and, uh, but I said to my daughter, Hey, do you want to meet Bob? And she said, yeah, I want to meet him. And I said, okay, let's go meet him. So I brought her into the green room where Bob was. And I said, Hey Bob, I'd, I'd like to introduce you to my daughter. And interestingly enough, we were coming in from like behind and Bob was sitting here just kind of going over his notes before he spoke. And he turned around and he looked right at my daughter and he said, and he called her by name and he said, what do you love? And that one question, what do you love? He didn't ask her what her favorite subject was, didn't ask her what grade she was in school. He asked her, what do you love? And I have to tell you, my daughter immediately beamed and she beamed for the next six months. Oh, the smile on her face. And she began to share with Bob about how she loves dogs and how she loves horses. And they began to dialogue about the things that she loves. And my daughter in that moment became fully alive. So can I ask you to do something fun this coming Saturday? As you run into people, as you have interactions with people, can you look them in the eye maybe at some point and just look them in the eye and say, hey, what do you love? Not what is the size of your church, not how many people came to Christ in the last however long. All those things are worthwhile. And if they share those things, celebrate with them. Absolutely celebrate. Let's, the Bible says to rejoice with those who rejoice. So let's rejoice. If someone's had a fantastic year, let's rejoice with them. Absolutely. We want to do that. But if you ask someone, what do you love? And you capture from them the things that come out of their spirit and their soul, Chances are you'll minister to them in a powerful way. You know, God's given us an incredibly important mission. There's nothing more important in our world right now 
that God cares about more than he cares about bringing people into a relationship with him that are not in a relationship with him. That's what motivates the Holy Spirit to empower us to exalt the name of Jesus so that our relationship with the Heavenly Father can be restored. Nothing is more important than going after the 22 million. And we want to do that together. We want to be locked arms going after that together. And we want to do it as people who love each other, who believe in each other, and who share their prayer requests with each other. So let's come. Let's come together on Saturday. And let's ask Holy Spirit to do what only he can do in our midst. I can't wait to see you. Thanks so much again in advance for the sacrifice of your time. Join us on Saturday. I'm confident God's going to show up. And I'm praying that we'll never be the same after that day. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Thanks so much.